Good morning YouTube. Right now it's 5.30 in the morning, the moon is still up in the sky and I want to introduce you to a very special car. Behold, the most unsports car ever, the Toyota iGo. Now the name is really ironic, iGo as in I go, but it doesn't really go that much anywhere because it has a 1 liter, that's 1.0, yes 1000 cc engine, it has 3 cylinders and 65 horsepower. Now these days there's plenty of motorcycles that have more cylinders, more power and more displacement. Let's hear how she sounds. That's one mean engine. Now on the inside there's more good stuff. I mean the car doesn't even have a tachometer. But the cherry on top is the fact that those massive 65 horsepower are sent to the front wheels via this. Now the cherry on top of that cherry on top is that I'm taking this car starting right now on a 600 plus mile, that is 1000 plus kilometers drive to Budapest, the capital of Hungary, and back. Now that raises many questions indeed. The first being, why would I do that to myself? Well, the answer is that I'm doing it for my MR2, of course. The second question is, why am I not going with my daily driven Suzuki SX4, which with its 107 horsepower and manual transmission compared to this looks like a Bugatti Veyron. Unfortunately, the Suzuki is unavailable and I need it to go today. Question number three is what do I need you know for the MR2 from Budapest? Well I'm going to Budapest to pick up my Coney Yellow Sport Shocks. Now why am I going to Budapest? Because the nearest distributor of Coney products I could find was in Budapest. Yet another question is raised is why didn't I have them shipped over? Well I couldn't find a solution that is cheap enough, actually I couldn't find one that doesn't cost more than the shocks themselves, and I couldn't find a solution that, uh, you know, would get the shocks here quick enough. So the quickest and cheapest thing to do was to get a car and drive to Budapest to pick the shocks up. Now if that isn't sacrificing myself for my MR2, and if the MR2 doesn't repay me by being an awesome car. I will be very angry indeed. So let's hit the road and let's go to, I remember the name of the shock distributor in Budapest, it's called Karasi, Ka, Karashi, Kar, I have no idea how to read this, this is the logo and this is what they're called. So that's our target and let's hit the road. So I'm about an hour into the journey and I have already been passed by buses and trucks several times. Now that didn't really surprise me. What surprised me was that moments ago I was passed by a gentleman on one of those new electric bicycles. Now in the Igo's defense the man did have very prominent leg muscles. I've been driving the iGo for a bit over three hours now and uh, I think uh, it's starting to mess with my head. Actually the driving is so boring that I think I, I'm beginning to produce car enthusiasm antibodies that are killing off the car enthusiasm inside me. Uh, just a few moments ago I caught myself 
thinking about buying a Prius. So, it's been four hours of driving the iGo now and it's really not that bad. I'm getting used to it. And the fuel consumption, it's amazing. It took four and a half hours into the trip now and it's been going pretty good. And I realized something. This automatic transmission thing, it's pretty good. I mean, my left foot has never been this well rested. So it's been five hours so far and I have figured out a few things. Number one is that this so-called car enthusiasm is really nonsense. I mean cars are material things made from metal and plastic and spending all this time and money on them is just plain stupid. The second thing that I have figured out is that I'm going to remove the bike carbs from my 4AG and I'm going to convert my engine so that it can run on recycled vegetable oil. screaming at 11,000 rpm have saved the day and saved the car enthusiast inside me. I'm very happy about that and glad I won't be driving a 4AG running on recycled vegetable oil. There was some very dangerous stuff happening to me right there but we have survived. So what's happening right now is that we are 36 kilometers uh, ahead of Budapest which is I don't know 20 miles or something. So uh, what's going to happen after that? I'm going to finish the trip. I'm going basically to my accommodation in Budapest. I'm going to spend the night there, you know, get some well-deserved rest. And then early tomorrow morning, I'm going to the shock shop to Karasi slash Karashi, whatever they're called, and picking up the shocks, you know, doing some sightseeing of Budapest as well, and then heading home. So, you know, let's finish what we started and keep going strong.
sötétében a határai közelében, és attól tart, hogy Irán meg akarja vetni a lábát Szíriában, ahonnan a libanoni síhitákkal és a szíriai hadsereggel közös frontot nyithat Izrael ellen. Három újabb magyar cég csatlakozott az elit vállalkozás fejlesztési programhoz. A cég vezetési módszereket és networking lehetőségeket nyújtó képzésben Magyarország ismét kiemelkedően jelentős számban képviselteti magát. A programmal a budapesti értéktűzde célja az, hogy elősegítse a sikeres hazai középvállalkozások fejlődését. A Bét jog tanácsosát, Lódi Katát hallják. for the micro tour of Budapest. Uh, definitely looks like a very fun city that has a lot to offer. Unfortunately, my stay had to be short and sweet, but I definitely do plan to come again, stay longer and see what else Budapest and Hungary in general has to offer. So I'm happy that the shocks are finally in my possession. They're in the car and now it's time to head back. Uh, I'm going back the same way I came. So pretty much nothing to show you there and yeah I guess it's time to finally end the video here so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to share like comment and subscribe and I'll be seeing you soon on the B4A channel <laughs>